Um, thank you for um, giving me to um, the present my uh, study today. So this is my disclosure. And uh, first of all, so what is a complete? So I'm going to show you the video. So the the place the smartphone on the smartphone stand, and then press the start button. And then, so place your thumbs on the top electrodes to record an EKG, and then touch the side electrodes with your other fingers, and the EKG recording starts, just like that. So remain still until recording the 30 seconds is completed. So that's it. So recording is completed. So you can see the Omron Connect, uh, and then so you can see the result of the EKG. So the, what is the AF detection accuracy? So the sensitivity is 96 to 98 percent, and the specificity is 86 to 96 to 96 percent respectively. It's very high sensitivity and the specificity. So today I'm going to show you about the, our recent results of our study. So the ablation for atrial fibrillation is performed in many centers around the world. So we therefore investigated the usefulness of at-home EKG in the post-ablation management. So in this study, the persistent age of fibrillation and the going catheter ablation are enrolled for and uh, followed up for one year after ablation. So the complete was not available commercially in Japan during the study, so physicians made all clinical decision based on their usual practice. And if physicians and uh, the patient were blinded to the complete results. So this is a study flow chart. The, of the 128 atrial fibrillation patients enrolled, and the five patients later withdrew their permission to the use of the data. So the final number of patients enrolled was 123, and 121 patients received atrial fibrillation ablation, and 94 uh, patients were included in the final analysis set, in excluding the patients for the, 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 the reason presented in this slide. And a patient characteristic is here. The mean age was 60, about 65 years old, and uh, the 80 percent of the patient were female, and more than half of the patient had a hypertension, and a mean CHADS2 score was 1.1, and uh, the about 50 percent had long-term persistent atrial fibrillation, which means more than one year. So this is the, the, the kaplan meier analysis of the time from ablation to first detection of recurrence AF. So during the follow-up period, the patients were encouraged to take daily blood pressure and uh, EKG measurements. At 12 months, 90% atrial fibrillation recurrence were detected in the usual care and 33% in the complete. And in the patient with recurrent atrial fibrillation found on both usual care and the complete, the time to first atrial fibrillation detection by the complete was about 40 days faster than the usual care. And in, in addition, we examined the, the, the additive effect of the complete on the detection rate of usual care on, uh, when, when used in the combination with the usual care. When, when the adherence to the complete measurement was divided by 80%, the effect of the complete on the detection of the recurrence atrial fibrillation used in, in usual care was hazard ratio 1.71% uh, for the low adherence group, but was significant for the high um, adherence group with hazard ratio 2.15. So, 
that the significant adherence uh, dependent difference of the complete was found in detecting atrial fibrillation recurrence. So this is a message from me that despite shorter measurement time, the, the complete detected recurrent atrial fibrillation more and faster than usual care by measuring them more frequently after atrial fibrillation ablation. This is because the, the recurrent patterns of atrial fibrillation detected by the complete include many short-lasting cases that would not be detected clinically. So that finally, I'd like to introduce the ongoing study. So the, the 4,000 um, people aged more than 60 years old with hypertension and uh, without the history of atrial fibrillation uh, was recruited in the study. And then so after that, so EKG and blood pressure measurement at home in the morning and the evening for three months. And after that, we will analyze the data and interpret the atrial fib whether the, the possible atrial fibrillation is the true atrial fibrillation or not by our um, the physicians. So the, we, we um, have just finished the, the recruitment of those patients. So the, today, I'm gonna show you about the, the brief baseline data. The, the patient were registered nationwide in Japan over one year from April 2022 to 2023, uh, just two months ago. And a total of 4,077 uh, individuals were recruited from the, the top, the, the northern area of Japan to the southern area of Japan. So this is the baseline characteristic of this study. And the mean age was uh, 66 years old. And the BMI is about 25. And then complication is uh, written by here. And uh, the metabolic syndrome is about one third of the study. So the, this is the last slide of my presentation. So the purpose of this study uh, will be the four. And the one is uh, we are gonna detect the detection rate. Uh, we're gonna uh, investigate the detection rate of subclinical atrial fibrillation in, in, in hypertensive patients over a three months period. And then number two, uh, we are gonna investigate the relationship uh, to their prognosis in real world setting. And number three, we are gonna do the cost effective analysis. And finally, um, we hope to do the identification of risk factor for atrial fibrillation incidence and the development of an AI model to, to prevent atrial fibrillation occurrence in hypertension patients. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sino. Please join us here.